Thanks guys for coming to check out the Autosports Engineering Twin Disc Kit video for the CD09 on the 2JZ. Now this kit is also going to work on all of the JZ motors, 1JZ, VVTi, non-VVTi, 2JZ, VVTi, non-VVTi. So it doesn't really matter if it's a JZ, it's going to go on there. It's the same crank bolt pattern offset, everything else. Now, the I'm going to go over a couple questions that I get asked on a regular basis. Uh, first, guys will ask, well, can my single disc fit on this so I can use a twin later? Absolutely not. If you're unfamiliar with the way how the modularity of a twin is set up, the first thing you're gonna do is if you check out both of these flywheels, this is a twin and here's a single. If you look at the friction surface area, you can see a drastic difference. The factory style clutch discs on the CD 09s are roughly right around 10 inches. Twins are typically going to come in the most popular in a seven and a quarter for the smaller setups. We use the Clutchmasters FX 850, which is a eight and a half inch uh, dual stack assembly. So obviously because of the difference in friction surface, there is absolutely no way to interchange a twin onto a single or a single onto a twin. The bolt pattern is completely different for the pressure plates because this is designed for a factory style uh, CD09 pressure plate bolt pattern, which as you can see is going to be significantly larger than the twin. So that's the first question we always get asked. The next is, does the twin come with a hydraulic release bearing? Well, depending on which configuration you purchase, yes and no. If you're going with the cut style conversion kit, you will be using a hydraulic release bearing. Does the twin come with a release bearing? Yes, it does for that kit. If you're using a no cut version, you're not. The no cut version is designed so that you pretty much will reuse and utilize whatever was already pre-existing in your specific transmission. So if it use a concentric slave, you're going to be reusing the concentric slave. If it was equipped with a fork for the actuation on the clutch pressure plate, then you will be reusing the fork. So that answers that question right there. Now, the one recommendation I am gonna give is if you're using one of the transmissions for a no cut conversion and you wanna use the twin, if you haven't already purchased a concentric slave upgrade, please do so. The factory Nissan slave was not great. There are a couple options that are out there like Z-Speed Z1, buy one of those because save yourself the time and trouble that thing can barely keep up with a single disc upgrade clutch, much less you putting a twin in. So that's that's a word of advice. Now, the twins, beyond the fact that you're going to be able to hold more power in the long run, uh, they do share one primary component that interchanges between the two. It's the same starter ring gear that goes without saying. But the main thing is we actually use the exact same pilot bushing adapter on both kits. So in all actuality, all of my flywheels, except for the BMW ones, use the exact same pilot bushing. So if you ever decided you wanted to upgrade from the single disc, say you're maxing out the power you were already using, you decide, hey, I want a twin, I'm going balls to the wall now, uh, great. The pilot bushing setup is identical for the center bore on the flywheels. Now. Power wise, you're gonna get a couple options to really pick and choose from. Uh, first, some guys will say, well, do you make a twin that'll hold an OS guy can or a spec? No, I don't. Do, will I make one in the future? Probably not. Uh, reason being, I've always liked Clutchmasters clutches. They're very reliable. Their customer support is great. They're a US based company. And with all the supply chain issues we've had for like pretty much the last two years, these guys have not dropped the ball once. So they've, because they make everything in house and I mean everything, uh, the supply on their stuff stands up with the quality. And so I've been using these on my combos with the twins for about five years now uh, with great luck, great success. So I definitely recommend them. And that's part of the reason I don't hesitate to use their uh, modular twins on any of my custom flywheel adaptations. Um, now, 
Another question is you might get the flywheel and you'll notice, hey, you know, this one is almost flush. It's realistically about 30 over the surface, whereas this is going to be 100. So there is a noticeable step on the twin uh, flywheel. That is by design and by the manufacturer's request as far as how they set it up. So if you get the flywheel, don't realistically, I mean, there's no, there's no necessity in contacting me to tell me that you think that the flywheel was machine wrong or something. That's how it's supposed to be. It does have a, a noticeable step uh, orientation as far as in reference to the outer uh, surface area where the pressure plate feet mate. And I'm going to go into that a little bit later so you understand why that's made it that way because it matches how the clutch was manufactured. Now, as far as selection, Clutch Masters has a, quite a few options. And the good thing for it is that it doesn't cost you guys anything extra. You just have to specify if you have a specific request when purchasing. Otherwise, I'm going to tell you how I send them out and why I send them out using a certain configuration. Now, you're going to have the ability to go with a strapped or a non-strapped pressure plate, as well as sprung and unsprung disc. And we're going to show that uh, in a little minute. So let's go ahead and without ado, open up this box, get the pieces out and go over those. The first thing you're going to notice is that the Clutch Masters kit, unlike some other twins on the market, they actually supply you with an alignment tool. This is very critical. Give me a few minutes and I'll tell you why. You're also going to get all of the hardware for the legs on the pressure plate. Now, for you guys that have never seen a twin, I'm going to go through the basics of it. One, you get a modular billet hat with a top floater friction surface up here. Here you go, great. That's the first component. So here's your pressure plate. Now, one thing we're gonna notice is that, guess what? They went ahead and labeled both the flywheel side and the pressure plate side of your disc. So if you take them apart, it's gonna be really easy to identify which one goes where. So you don't have to worry about that confusion. Now, if you'll notice, these things are actually already kind of pre-assembled for you now. The floater still floats, but they've gone ahead and attached both discs, which to me is a great little idea to keep you guys from just making sure that at least the first step, you get it done right. So if you're flipping stuff around, you don't have to worry about it. So like I said, now they come pre-attached, top and bottom, and it's pretty much a unihub. So since it's a singular hub, guess what? Now the guys don't have to worry about when they were bending the, the secondary uh, disc because when they didn't have both, uh, both um, clutch discs fully aligned because the input shaft is similar to the alignment tool. This would have to go through both. Clutch Masters made this change recently where it's one hub. So before guys would not push the alignment tool all the way through. And then when they're trying to force the tranny on, the input shaft would naturally go through the first disc and then end up snagging on the second disc. Guys would force it on, try to pull it on with bolts, and then they end up bowing the second disc. And they're like, hey man, I'm on the dyno and my clutch started slipping. There's something wrong with your assembly. And they take it apart and the first telltale sign that, the, that there was something going on with the flywheel side disc is one, you wouldn't have even wear all the way around on the friction pad. Then when you take the disc off, you notice it looked like you were getting ready to eat cereal out of it because that's how much it had both. So that's one solution that, like I said, I love what Clutch Masters does with their pieces, man. And even though they're labeled and everything, just that, that singular hub, that saves guys a ton of issues during install. And since it's all modular, the floaters tabbed out for the feet. It doesn't really matter how you drop it in there. And that's it. Now, you'll definitely notice that this assembly has a different disc on the pressure plate side versus the flywheel side in two, in two facets. Not just compound, as you can tell by looking at it, but also this one is ordered how I like to recommend the clutches for that'll suit the majority of users out there. 
This is a street disc, not only based on the compound, but guess what? It's also a sprung hub. This helps with some dampening, uh, drop some of the noise level that guys like to complain with about twins, but it also adds to the drivability. This is a race disc, as you can see, no springs and a higher grade compound for clamping and torque capacity. So this combination is typically how I like to send them out, one of each disc, and it's to me, it's kind of like the best of both worlds. Unless you're trying to go for absolutely max power, well, this will work for you. If you're trying to go for max power, what we'll do is we'll throw in two race discs on it. Not only do you get the choice for that selection as far as this material, you're also gonna get the choice as far as whether you go with a strapped, which you can research, they give a lot of information on their website versus the strap versus the unstrap. But primarily they have a street pressure plate option and a race pressure plate. I do this combo along with a race. I mean, street, street, street for all three, for top disc, bottom disc, and this, you're gonna get probably the most docile uh, twin that's really out there, but you're gonna sacrifice overall torque capacity. So. I don't really know why someone would want to do that when the single is a great option that'll hold identical power. It's up to your liking, you know, to, to each his own. But this is the combo that I like. Uh, it's always going to be the race pressure plate, a street disc, and one race disc. This is easily going to bring guys up to right around the 900 horsepower, probably about like 750 torque from our experience. If you wanna hit like 1,000 to 1,100, which we had some guys, just go race, race, race. Depending on the size of the turbo, typically at that point, you've got a bigger turbo, so your torque level kind of drops a little bit. That, that combo will work just fine. So we're gonna go ahead, drop everything together. And this is pretty much how the entire assembly goes together. Easy peasy. Now, when you're installing all of this, for reference, number one, the pilot bushing replaces the factory bushing that's inside the crank. So before you begin, whatever's inside of your crank, make sure it's gone. Whether it was a bushing or a bearing, if it, the transmission was originally automatic or manual, remove it because this is designed to replace it and adapt to the Nissan uh, input shaft diameter. Next you'll notice is that pressure plates on the twins aren't dowel. They're pretty much easily aligned. And now we're going to go back to the difference between the surface area. Now you say, okay, well, why was that? Well, if you look at what's going on over here, you'll notice that the feet are actually above the aluminum surface area. And that's by design, because as soon as everything is bolted in place and torqued down properly, those feet of the pressure plate will be completely flush with the surface on the outer area of the flywheel. That's how it's designed. That's why it was stepped, because as you tighten it, the clutch fingers are going to flatten themselves out and even out as you go in a crisscross pattern, the feet are gonna be completely, uh, you know, mated against the aluminum flywheel surface area, and that's it, you're good to go. So, like I said, if you're not familiar with a twin, there are a couple things that you gotta get used to, but visually they're different, size on the clutch disc are gonna be different because the issue is, is that you got two discs stacked on top of each other, smaller diameter versus a larger singular disc. That's how you get all that extra torque capacity on the twin. Overall, you're also gonna notice that a twin, when you accelerate or just free rev your motor, a twin accelerates way faster. It's kind of like revving a bike. Your total reciprocating mass weight is dropped. Like you can combine this, which will be about, mm, I mean, a typical clutch assembly with a steel pressure plate this size probably weighs about, I would say about 20 pounds plus the flywheel and everything else. I don't know, rough estimate, say we throw everything together, you're at like 30, say 33 pounds, all right? This thing, I mean, you're gonna be essentially right around 20 pounds. That's a huge difference in 
total weight on your rotating assembly. So that's why when you start clipping off on the gas pedal, this thing revs up like that. So you're gonna get faster transient response in between shifts, faster motor response when you're on and off the gas. I mean, they drive great. Obviously they are designed for higher horsepower levels if that's what you need. But the main key is it's, it's gonna be a stiffer pedal than what you will experience on a single. How Clutch Masters combats that on these configurations is you get the hydraulic release bearing paired with a decent sized master cylinder that moves a proper amount of volume or even the Clutch Masters delay valve. You can get these things where they're tamed in and they're fairly easy to drive on a daily driven vehicle or something that's taken out uh, often enough because what guys try and say or think it's, oh, I wanna hold the most power, but I want it to drive like stock. That's not gonna happen. I don't care what clutch you have on it. If you got a McLeod, if you have a Mantic, that's not gonna happen. There's always going to be a give and take. You don't make a bunch of power and still maintain Camry style drivability. That's just not gonna happen. You gotta be realistic. If you're more concerned about your full on drivability, then you gotta figure out what's what the balance is and creating the proper balance is why I like the Clutch Masters because the options for the pressure plates as, as well as the options in the disc, it's, it's not gonna be a one size fits all type of approach that a lot of other clutch manufacturers do. It's, we're gonna have the ability to get you kind of dialed in as best fit as possible because of those options. So, I mean, these things, just gonna snug this down in place so I can move it around. Now, all of the torque specs for this is all provided along with the with the kit when you get it. So it's not a big deal to try and figure that out. This isn't an install video. It's just pretty much an overview and a slight comparison. Now, the one thing I will remind everyone is going back to this is make sure this is installed prior to installing the flywheel. The center bore on my flywheels are larger than the center bore on your factory uh, flywheels and flex plates. So what happens is without this being there first, this assembly won't be hub centric when you put it on. You'll basically be trying to force the pilot bushing through the hole if you've already installed the flywheel onto your crank. So that's a no-no. Remember pilot bushing first, then clutch as far as install steps. Beyond that, I mean, they're great clutches. They're readily available. We got them in stock, ready to go, flywheels, everything else. I hope you enjoyed this video. Like I said, it's not an install video. It's just a quick comparison and some reference for you guys to look over. It should answer some uh, you know, common questions. Uh, anything else, feel free to go ahead and send me an email on the site's contact page. Make sure you hit the like button and go ahead and subscribe. Tell your friends. We got plenty of other videos coming for all of the products that I currently offer, as well as some sneak peeks as I continue to develop new products in the future. Thanks again for watching.